the uh, past three weeks have been, uh, there's only one word, uh, uh, incredible. We've used it uh, a lot. So we're going to use it a lot more. And uh, I, I, every morning when I wake up and every morning we get into a new town, I say, well, it can't get more hectic. It can't get more fantastic. And it does. Hello, I'm Ivor Davis, the interviewer, and I'm about to interview Ivor Davis, the author. The author of a new, exciting, fascinating book about traveling with the Beatles. Uh, my first question for you, Mr. Davis, is how was it that you happened to travel with the Beatles? How did it come to pass? I was a foreign correspondent for the Daily Express when I got a call from the foreign editor in London who said, there's a new group from Liverpool coming over to do a tour in America. I'd heard of the Beatles because they'd been on the Ed Sullivan show. And David English, the editor, said, you're traveling with them all the way from start to finish. And also you'll be ghosting George Harrison's column. So get up to San Francisco. Now, when you traveled with the Beatles, did you know anything at all about them? I knew very little about the Beatles. I mean, internet wasn't around, of course, 50 years ago. This was 1964. And so I very quickly did a bit of study and didn't, still didn't learn much. Uh, of course, they'd been on the Ed Sullivan Show. They'd been a sensation in New York. Uh, Beatlemania was raving wildly in Europe. And so I jumped on the plane and off I went to San Francisco to meet the Beatles never imagining what was in store for me because that was the most incredible ride of my life. Can you tell me what you learned about John, Paul, George and Ringo back in 1964? Good question that, Ivor. Now I should tell you that John, Paul, George and Ringo were much younger then as we all were and they were kind of not fully formed human beings. I mean, they're not the John, Paul, George and Ringo that you know, the legends in our lifetime. Uh, they were young, callow kids who'd hit, hit the jackpot. They were fun, they were irreverent, uh, they were amusing, and uh, they didn't know what the ride was gonna take and how long it was gonna go for. And they never imagined that their longevity would, would go in, in, into generations almost. Anyway, John was wicked, funny, Raw, the most, the most am amusing Beatle of them all. George was a bit surly, he was the youngest Beatle, he was a bit quiet. Uh, Paul was Mr. Personality, a great guy, knew how to get on with people. And Ringo, well, um, Ringo was a drummer. I mean, what, what do you say about drummers? <laughs> They're not the greatest brains in the world, are they? Was traveling with the Beatles fun? And if so, tell me why. It was a terrific trip. I, I, looking back, it, it, it was amazing. I don't even believe today that it happened. Uh, th they were fun. They didn't have bodyguards. They didn't have protectors. We hung out with them. We played cards with them in the middle of the night. We played Monopoly with them. We ate with them. We drank with them. We saw them in action. We saw them at the incredible concerts, which are insane. I mean, most of the concerts we went to, you couldn't hear a single word. You, you, you couldn't. I mean, there was so much screaming and we sat in the front row and we were bombarded like the Beatles were with all sorts of things from shoes to jelly beans. But it was a pretty bizarre occasion, believe me. And when you traveled with the Beatles back then, half a century ago, did you ever think that 50 years later they would become legends? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a question, to be honest, that of course not. Who could? Who could believe that uh, Sir Paul McCartney, uh, Ringo Starr is like a little god in the music business. John Lennon is a, you know, a man who climbed incredible heights. John Lennon was, is, and is, is absolutely unforgettable. As I said, even Ringo, Ringo is now a giant in his field. So we never knew, because who can have the vision to look 50 years ahead and say, this is the way it's going to be? Nobody. Nobody then, and nobody ever could or would. <laughs>